The Verge Science has a pretty popular YouTube channel with about 450,000 subscribers. They made an okay, but not so okay, video about radioactive waste. The title of the video? 88,000 tons of radioactive waste and nowhere to put it. Let's see where this will go. If you were an evil mastermind and you said, where could I put nuclear waste that would really scare the bejesus out of people. It's hard to think of one that's worse than San for a nuclear generating station. Not really. If I were an evil mastermind, I would do a million other things before considering doing anything with spent nuclear fuel. You could do more damage with a truck or a gun. This is the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station, just outside of San Clemente, California. It's been closed since 2013, but its operators are struggling with a problem that most plants in America share. All the spent nuclear fuel it ever generated is still trapped, right here. So the thing you notice immediately about this plant is its location. You've got the Pacific Ocean right there. You've got the Interstate 5 freeway just over that hill. You've got LA and San Diego within 75 miles and 8.5 million people living in the area. And smack dab in the center of it all is tons and tons of nuclear waste. It all sounds very impressive until you realize how this waste is stored and what it does. Spent nuclear fuel is basically inert. There are no chemical reactions in there. It's only producing a little heat while it slowly decays away. Behind us is the uh, containment building for Unit 3. Uh, inside that building is the uh, uh, nuclear steam supply system, which consists of the reactor, steam generators, pressurizer, and reactor coolant pumps. That's where the fuel would normally go. Bundles of hollow metal rods that are packed with little pellets of uranium. Inside the reactor, uranium atoms split apart in a chain reaction that produces heat. That's where the heat is generated, that, uh, that is uh, transmitted to the steam generators, to make steam, to turn the turbines, which makes electricity for our customers. Only, this plant hasn't produced electricity for years, ever since one of the steam generators sprung a leak. It is a done deal. SoCal Edison has gotten tired of waiting to reopen the troubled San Onofre power plant, so today the utility announced it is shutting it down for good. Now, the plant operators need to decontaminate the site, demolish the structures, and generally tear everything to the ground. First, though, they have to do something with all that fuel. Just to be clear, this stuff isn't going anywhere anymore anytime soon. Not unless we choose to do something interesting with it. The nice thing here is that we are talking about spent nuclear fuel, which means spent for conventional light water reactors. There's still a lot of energy in there. For years we have been trying to envision sites to permanently sequester nuclear fuel. But that's dumb. Places like Yucca Mountain are a waste of time as far as I am concerned. Keeping spent nuclear fuel at reactor sites or in some intermediate above-ground storage facility is fine. You have to be able to access it as soon as you have built up a new infrastructure of plants and reprocessing facilities that could help you use it more efficiently. Fresh fuel isn't actually all that radioactive. It gets more radioactive after it spends time in a nuclear reactor. Because that chain reaction that generates heat, it also makes other radioactive atoms like cesium-137, strontium-90, and plutonium-239. About half of the cesium and strontium decay in 30 or so years. The plutonium? That takes longer. Like 24,000 years longer. The short-lived isotopes can be troublesome indeed. They give off gamma radiation, which can be very harmful. But the plutonium is not a problem at all. It's just fissile fuel bred from fertile uranium-238, which can be used in different reactors. People like to state long-lived isotopes as a problem, but they are not. They are pretty harmless and very useful. 
These days, the spent fuel starts cooling off in cement lined pools of water. After a few years, it's moved to dry storage, air cooled steel containers inside massive concrete blocks. Eventually, they'll move all the waste into those blocks. They're lower maintenance, and they're supposed to withstand floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, airplane collisions, you name it. It requires uh, no pumps or active systems to support it. As long as we keep this inlet and outlet uh, free of any debris or blockage, this system will continue to operate. That's good because that's where the spent fuel is going to have to stay for the foreseeable future. And that's great because that's exactly where we want to keep it. What we are faced with here is a national problem. Every commercial plant in the States is faced with the same problem. There's not, nothing to do with the fuel because the federal government's not performing. San Onofre's first reactor powered up in 1968 at the height of nuclear energy's prime and the height of the energy industry selling America on how safe and powerful it was. The heat output of one pound of uranium can equal the heat output of 70 tons of coal. There were promises that one day, atomic energy would be too cheap to meter, that it would power the world by the year 2000. But for all that promise, there just wasn't a solid plan for the waste. Which is a political problem and not a technical one. Besides, while nuclear was struggling to become cheaper, it did have one great side effect. It saved tens of millions of lives as a mere byproduct, not just by providing clean air, but also by providing medical isotopes. One could argue maybe we should have thought about this as a nation before we started building nuclear power plants, but by this time, the horse is already out of the barn. That's Rob Nikoleski, a reporter at the San Diego Union-Tribune who's been following the story at San Onofre for years. In short, the reason why the spent nuclear fuel stays at San Onofre is because the federal government has dropped the ball. For decades, the plan has been to bury the waste underground. The government was supposed to start accepting spent fuel in 1998, and the site it settled on was Yucca Mountain in Nevada. Nevada politicians hated that idea. Beginning this year, the story takes a new, and yes, an ugly turn, which the press and others tagged months ago, the Screw Nevada Bill. So the plan has been stuck in limbo for decades, and nuclear power companies have been suing the government for missing that deadline. Meanwhile, nuclear plants keep operating. They produce about 20% of America's electricity and 2,200 tons of waste each year. Q, Q, Goofy, <coughs> Q, Goofy, mo <coughs> Q, Goofy, music, Q, Goofy, music, and 2,200 tons of waste each year. There's nothing wrong with the stuff that comes out of reactors. It's our fault that we think of wasting it, simply because we are too lazy to do anything exciting with it. This is probably not the ideal place to store spent nuclear fuel. We would all agree on that. But while it's here, we will fulfill our obligation to manage it safely. Look at it. We can maintain the area the way it is for hundreds, if not thousands of years. We can build new platforms on which to store the spent nuclear fuel. And we can do it, effort and we can do it effortlessly and cheaply. It's basically the lowest tech solution there is, and it works like a charm. What's wrong about that? There are a few ways out of this situation. There's, a, there's been a movement in Congress to restart Yucca Mountain. The Trump administration is in, is in favor of that. There's a, a bill that uh, is in the House. Then there's this talk about consolidated interim storage. There are two sites they've talked about there. There's even talk about moving the waste to higher ground near the plant, but farther from the sea. So there's all these different permutations out there that are basically put everything up in the air. Since this form of storage is as safe as it gets, we can take a longer time to figure out what to do with it. So what's the rush? Just keep it, maintain it, and once possible, reuse it. But in the meantime, the waste is going to sit there in that concrete fuel morgue on the coast. Again, it's safe in those blocks, we stood right next to them and then even swept ourselves for radiation, just to be sure. You probably weren't freaked out about the dry cask storage while you were standing there. And yet you make this video, which has this uncertain tone. But for people living near San Onofre, it's hard to forget about them entirely. 
They go on with their lives. They're, you don't see people freaking out. But on the other hand, though, it's something that hangs over their heads. What exactly hangs over their heads? The reactors have no fuel in them anymore. There's no operation of any kind. The spent fuel just sits there doing nothing. We wanted to see for ourselves, so we checked out the beach that the plant sits on. We passed people fishing, walking their dogs, surfing, hanging out, like you do on any other beach that isn't next to 1,700 tons of spent nuclear fuel. I'm still waiting to hear what the point of this video actually is. I asked some of them how it feels to be living in this thing's shadow. They weren't wild about talking on camera, but they had a lot to say. There was a guy walking his dog on the beach, and he actually said that nuclear power is this incredible thing, but storing the waste at the plants is a federal mistake. Another woman was there on the beach with her family. She says she surfs here all the time, but it's still eerie when she takes a wave back to shore and she sees those twin reactor domes staring back at her. He actually said that nuclear was this amazing thing. And then there's the anecdote of someone who perhaps doesn't understand fission all that well and has some gut feeling she can't explain. In any case, none of them actually said it on camera. And that's a big deal. There's not too much wrong with this video other than that it caters to this ominous feeling of there being something, not entirely understanding what it is creating a false sense of urgency, and not really offering a solution, thus prolonging the feeling of uncertainty. I think that The Verge has done a poor job in explaining what the deal with spent nuclear fuel is. I hope you liked this video. Thank you all for watching, and have a nice day.